blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet the church with the peace of the Lord. And I invite you, everyone to stand up. And we're going to open our Bible in Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Beginning in verse 1. Your blessed man. Your blessed man went. You too, Steve. <laughs> if you uh, haven't brought your Bible, you could read on a projection at the wall. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be liked to the ten virgins who took the lamp and went out to meet the bridge groom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took the lamp and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil with the vessels with their lamps. But while the bridge room was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, bridge room. Some traditions. Bridge, behold, the bridge room is coming. Go out to meet him. Then, all those virgins arose and trimmed the lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should be not enough for us and you, but no rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridge room came. And those who were ready went in with him in the wedding, and the door was shut. Amen. Please be seated.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brother, this is a song. It's a perfect song for this day, for the moment where we are living right now, because this is what the church desires. The subject, the people of God, is that, that we are the church from the last days. And we live, we live distant, distant from what was prophetized. It talks about the great and the terrible day of the Lord. We live distant from this day, this great moment. And what we want the church of the Lord is here for one period. For we are here as a passage. The word of the Lord says that because what we want is the church the church has, has to, to be raptured. What we desire is to hear what the prophet what the ap what John, the apostles, heard all, when heard at the aisle, when he was there in the aisle, on the aisle, in the island, and he heard the voice that came from the heaven, come up. And this subject is the moment, this subject is actual, this doesn't get old, because every day, this subject renew in our hearts there is no way that this subject gets old to be forgotten and that's why this song speaks to our heart because we live days in the world because the gospel in this world, and the modern gospel loses loses its focus. This Christianity that we see today, it's something that speaks more than this life and the eternal life. That's why we affirm that the focus of the Christianity, of the Christians that we have, is totally outside of the reality of Jesus. You only hear about and prosperity and cure and miracle for this life, that, that Jesus is going to open a better door, that, that this world has to get better. It's not that. It's not that, that what the Word says. We are not prevent from living that because the Lord wants to give the best to your servant. The, the Lord has the best for your church, but we cannot, we cannot ignore what is the message for this moment. And the message is the only one. The message is a, it's a, it's a shout. There comes the groom. Prepare your life. The word, each day as it passes, it goes in, in long steps, getting, getting distance from the Lord. It's already defined. There's no way we can change that. But in the same way, the church, the church also has its project. It has its destiny. We know where we're going. We know what we want. What, what we want is to hear our names 
be heard to enter in Jerusalem, celestial. And there we will see angels, archangels, and we're gonna we're gonna embrace our angels. And there will no more sadness, no anguish, no suffering. There will be eternal song. Glory Jesus. And the text that we have heard talks about that moment. Jesus here talks about a parable. And this parable, us as a faithful church, We're going to see Jesus talking, talking about a wedding. The people have been invited for a wedding. And that the great expectation was in the moment that the groom arrived. All the preparation, the, invi the invitees, the guests, the, the way people dressed who is going to be invited, everything about this wedding came back to one moment for the, the arrival of the groom and nobody knew what happened. It was a surprise in the, in the feast. It was the main moment of that feast was the arrival of the groom. My brethren, we think that, that the people that are going to be invited that will participate on this feast, that will be called to enter, to banquet with the groom, are the ones that have their names written in the hall and the member of a denomination that are part of a that are part of the institution. In a Christian institution, the people use that to betray the people. The they use this argument. They use this argument for the for the attract people, so they take advantage for their own benefit. Interesting that in heaven, it's not divided by quarters by blocks where where block this block this block belongs to that church and then on the other block belongs to that other church and the heaven it, 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 there's nothing like this in the heaven the, the heaven is not divided by religion the, the heaven is not divided by denomination the people who live in heaven will be called for for the Jesus criteria, for the Lord criteria, and not criteria from this life, not human criteria, but a criteria from God. I'll tell you something: the criteria of God, what is called criteria of God, is very heavy for some people. Some people complain. No, it could be that way. I have to do this. I cannot do that. Those are criteria of God. But for the person to live in heaven, it needs simply to be called. But for that, she has to be within what is the standards of God. Uh, not standards of the denominations of what we live in this world. The main moment was the arrival of the groom. It was the top of it. it was the it was the peak of the feast. But interesting that the parable talks about talks about ten virgins. Ten virgins were invited. All of them had lamps. All of them had the dresses. 
the wedding dresses, they were practically prepared. The, they were all, they had everything that, that needed, that gave them access to, to the banquet when the groom arrived. And the parable talks about the groom rushed. No, no, did he, he rush? No, he got, he got late. He delayed. He, he took long. And, and with that, the virgins were, got tired and they fell asleep. But next to midnight, next to the, the time, the word says that they heard a shout. And then they, and then they, let's talk about what is, what is the delay of Jesus. If we look in the original, when Jesus, when Jesus delay, this word delay, the orange of the, the word, yeah. In Greek is in the root and Kronos. And Kronos is Kronos, you know, is the is the time of the man, and Kairos is the time of God. And then when the man is and what is the time of this life, which is the rational time, which is the man's time, when the man is is outside of the time of God, for that, for those. Jesus uh, always, always delaying. But for those who are not looking for Jesus in the time of this life, the interest of these people are Jesus comes in the time of the Lord. He comes in the time of God. Because Jesus because does not He doesn't fulfill His agenda. He fulfills the time of the Father. He came because of the Father and He said, I came here to realize the things of the Father, to take care of all the Father's things. Since He was small when He was left and the, and the feast and His fathers left Him, left Him there. When they came back, He says, I'm taking care of the things of the Father. I came, I came to take care of uh, the things of the Father. José looked at Mary. No. He, he's not talking for this life. Everything that Jesus talked, everything that, all the expressions of Jesus, all the work operations, all the works of Jesus, all the miracle of Jesus was prophetic. He talked about, he spoke that he was taking care of the celestial father. And then the agenda of Jesus, the agenda, it was within of the time of Jesus, of the Lord. And Jesus never, never delayed. He came to, to, to the encounter of the man in the right time. He always comes to meet us. He, he always comes to help us in the right time. In the right time of God. And there's no one in this world that can go meet the man faster than Jesus. Every time that he comes to him, our encounter, he always operates a blessing. He never leaves us in the same way we were. For, for the contrary, every encounter with Jesus, you are, you wonder. It's wonderful. You, are, you get out of that encounter blessed and transformed next to Jesus, closer. And that's why Jesus came to the world to present the reign of the God. He didn't come here to present the reign of life. No. Otherwise, he would go in the palace and the empire. This is my place. Get out. They would get out. Because there's power in the word of Jesus. Jesus never presented the authorities. He always presented to the people of God, to the church. And he told one, the soldiers one time, if the Father wants, he sent the angels here, 
and you see what happened. Jesus, when he was captured, Peter wanted to help him. He said, Calm down, Peter. Relax. Don't worry. Jesus always did what was written in eternity. That's why for us, that we are faithful to him, for the church, for the faithful church that does not live in the criteria of this world, but lives in the criteria of the Father, Jesus comes in the right time. He doesn't delay. He doesn't fail. We're not waiting in vain. We're not wasting our time. We're not here for nothing. What we desire, what we want, is to live in the heaven. That's what the Holy Spirit calls comfort us. That's why the Holy Spirit always acts in favor of the man. Giving us the conditioning, positioning us, taking us, indi indicating the, the way. That's why it's the, it's the job of the Holy Spirit. Don't even try. Mom, Dad, brethren, you can't force the people to accept that. The person has to, has to be alerted by the Spirit, Holy Spirit, to take his position and follow the Lord. We are, us as a father, sometimes we force our kids to the presence of the Lord because, because it's a blessing. It's a blessing to have our kids in the presence of the Lord. But the best message is the one lived. It's a phrase that we can never live, live to talk. The best message is the one you live and not the one that you pray. Because the self of the, the Lord has to live the word. And for those and a lot of people, Jesus, Jesus got late and then and delay the groom. They all had lamps. When the word talks about lamp, what, what God wants to talk about when the word talks about lamp and sound and Psalms 119 talks Lamps for my feet oh, is your word. All of the wives, all of the virgins had the lamps. All of them had a word. Because there was a moment in the history and with the Bible, the, the word of God was, was hidden. Before Luther, nobody had access to the Bible only a very selective people and and it was translated for for that word that no nobody knows what to speak is it don't know know it's latin so not many people had access to the bible back then lothero it was a language where there's no value nobody talks latin no one had access to the bible only a small group a selective group but god uses the man and from that moment, all of us started to have access to the Word of God because every man has access to the Bible. He doesn't, may not want it, not buy it, not read it, but he has access to it. It, it talks about that 10 of them, 10 of the virgin had lamp. All of them had a Word of God. And if you look at around the world, you go look at the Google, there's a lot of, there's Women Bible, Worker Bible, Holy Spirit Bible, Women Bibles, even for Worker Bibles, even Lady Servant has Bible. All type of Bibles, you find all kinds of Bibles. Women Bibles, there's some orientations there. Children Bible, Children Bibles, Kids Bibles, all kinds of Bibles. All of the people in the world has access to the Bible. It's all, you know, if you want it, you have it. You go to the library, you'll find it. Computer, Google, cell phones, you have access to the Bible. You have access to the Word. But interesting where is that when they fell asleep after the shop, where they woke, why do they, why do they realize five of them 
had oil and had oil, extra oil. And they had enough oil and, and five of them and five of them had no oil and they were desperate. Well, we need, we need oil. Give me some oil. Please divide some of the oil with me because the groom is coming and we need to enter. The groom arrived and we need to go in. And the prudent wives, no, no way. If I give it to you, I'm going to miss it to me. Go and buy some of the oil. And when they came back, the groom had already called the five ones that were ready prepared with the oil, with the le with enough oil. And when they came back, the other fives, there was no, there, there was no way to enter. They couldn't enter. What Jesus wants to show us, the man today, everybody talks about Jesus, God. Everybody talks to Jesus, that Jesus is returning. It's this and that. And even today, some people make fun of it, fun of it about the, the return of Jesus. You turn the TV, they talk about Jesus. You turn some anything radio, everybody is, is in many places. It's the talking about Jesus. But the word talks to us. The word without the oil, which is the Holy Spirit. The word without the revelation of God. The word of God. The letter without what is the action of the Holy Spirit in the man will kill the man because the word kills but the Holy Spirit lives and that's why it's important for us that, that we are that we have knowledge of the word that we are here fighting for our salvation now that we are prepared us that we are prepared with the dresses with the wedding with, with the Bibles in our hands, singing songs, participating in services and visuals and early dawns, meetings, visits. We know what is this environment, this is spiritual environment. We are waiting for the groom to come back. The shout's already given. The shout's already given. The trumpets is, are already and Matthew 24. In some places they talk about it. The wars. We see a lot of signs of the return of Jesus. Everything that anticipates that has to, to happen for the return of Jesus has already taken place. The shout was already given. And they're already been given by the church. The Holy Spirit is working. And the shout is that the groom is coming, has been given. And the, the November 24th, we're going to give another shout. As a church, we're going to say, Jesus, come. The signs are. are are coming through the year 70 after Christ Israel 70 years after Israel was was not considered a nation anymore and they were out they were out, they disseminated it was invaded 70 years after Jesus was born the temple everything was destroyed after 14 years, more or less, they started to return. They started to come back to Israel. In, in 1948, Israel became a, a nation, a knowledge nation worldwide. There was a there was a, a voting where. A, a Brazilian gave a Minerva vote. He was the president of it. Some wanted it and some of them did not want it. 
and the Brazilian voted in favor of the knowledge of the nation of Israel as a country in 1948. Two years a year ago, Israel completed 70 years. They celebrated 70 years of a nation, again, a feast. And the word says that. Jesus says one time, when the grows, when the, the, it's because of the summer, the fig tree, when the fig tree grows next to the summer. What was impossible to happen, happened. Today, Israel is a nation known by the world attacked, persecuted, but is a nation. Some time ago, the first minister of Israel spoke that. So we do have all the material, all the material to, 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 for the construction of the Temple of Solomon. Everything is ready, even the study, all the designs. We, we can't find the, the, find the place. It has to be the same place where David David had it and, it was and then they built the temple and when that happens when the Solomon's temple is reconstructed Israel the sacrifice it's going gonna, it's gonna to start again the lamb it's going to be coming that's going to start again. but that's not going to happen until the, the churches are removed because the only sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice happened by Jesus, with Jesus. And what is preventing you to happen is the Holy Spirit with the church. After the Holy Spirit was removed, then they could do that. But until then, we will live depending on the Lord. There's only one sacrifice, which is it was the sacrifice of Jesus in the cross when he died for the, us, when he gave us the chance, the condition for us to become redeemed by Jesus. And today, the criteria for you to enter in heaven, you have to be saved by Jesus. You have to accept the sacrifice of Jesus in the cross. You have to leave the sacrifice. You have to have your name written in the book of life. Not, not written in the book of church, but in the book of life. They had, they had the lamp, but they didn't have the oil. And there are a lot of people in that way, having their hands, the knowledge, the biblical knowledge, the word, but they don't have the intimacy with the Holy Spirit. They don't live what the Holy Spirit has showed them to live. They don't seek. To, clo to get closer to the Holy Spirit, they don't, they don't seek the sanctification. So the criteria for the man is to go into heaven is that you, you can have a Bible, you can sing songs, you can s be sitting in a church bench, but if you don't have a life in the Holy Spirit, if you don't have an intimate life with the Holy Spirit, brethren, you're running a great risk, a big risk, to go and have to go after oil and when you go you could probably lose your blessing because in the moment that the moment that the man leaves the presence of the groom is where he wants to grab stuff here goes to the things of the world this is good here i don't i don't i don't feel i don't feel touched by the holy spirit over here is good so when he goes out of the presence of the Lord, he, he runs a big risk of the Jesus to come back and he and he keep, he be caught in, in that. And he be caught outside of his presence. Church doesn't save anybody. You can have a Bible inside of the church and then you not have the oil. You can have a Bible in a Baptist church, Presbyterian, any other church and not have the oil. It doesn't matter. The criteria of God, it's, it's not our criteria. 
It's not established by the Maritain, the Maranatha Church or Baptist Church. Those are celestial criteria from the Father independently. You have to be with the Lord. You have to fill the communion with the Lord. And give the oil. Divide the oil with me. It doesn't work like that. Because the blessing of the Father, the salvation of the Father doesn't go through the, the Son. It doesn't go to the mom. The salvation of the husband doesn't go to the wife. And so on. Nobody divides salvation. The salvation is an individual. It's, with, it's you and the Lord. You have to have the Word. You have to have the operation of the Holy Spirit. Enough to give you the condition that where the groom arrives and the groom looks at you. He sees your face. He has to see the shine of the of the light in your life. If you don't have the revelation, if you have if you don't have the, the shine of the Holy Spirit in your life, the groom will not recognize you. And that's why tonight we're here. This rush of the Lord and prepare his people and prepare his faithful church, a group of people for these people are called come up because here it's your place and we ask you do you want to go to heaven do you want to go to heaven or what do you have to say to the Lord yes I go to say my father is my, my father is Christian my, my mother is saved oh my mom was one of the founders of Maranatha Church my, my mom was born in the Maranatha Church. My father was born in the Maranatha Church. Ch church. Does that work? No, that doesn't work. You have to have your own experience with the Lord. You have to have your definition with Jesus. In, in Jesus, you know why? Because when you come back and knock on the door, open, open. You know what he's going to say? I don't know you. I do not know you. You can say that. And what's going to define the servant, what's going to define those who serve the Lord is the, rev the word revealed. Because through the word, the man is judged. The man that will not be raptured in Jesus, when he comes back to rapture the church, if he's not going to take with the Holy Spirit to live with Jesus, with Jesus, he will be judged by the word. He's going to be condemned by the word. But the word says that those who are with Jesus, that's why my brethren, fight for your blessing, fight for your, there's no time to play, fight for your salvation. There's 2,000 years there, I've been hearing this, every Sunday I hear this, every Tuesday, every Saturday, every Monday. Everybody talks about Jesus returning. It doesn't. It doesn't return. It never returns. That's weird. Have an experience with the Lord. Seek in the deepness, deepest. You see, when Jesus returns to come, return the church to return to cap to wrap to your your life. You see, you see your name be called. You'll be received by the Lord. And that's the song that we sang, that we sang. It will be a real song in your life, and you, you live the eternity in the presence of the Lord. Bless that the Lord can bless us. Let's heal us. You're going you're gonna to put your, you're gonna put in the altar your name, your life. You're going to say, Lord, I need to live in your presence. I need to prepare to be ready for when you return so my name can be called.
Let's stand up, Brandon. Let's have a word of glorification to him. We adore your name, Lord. We, we say your name. Because one day we'll see you face to face. We praise you, Lord, because our lives are in the altar. We praise you because we wait for the great day. Because you're great for our lives. Because we adore you for tonight. We praise for this, this spiritual feast. Because you have chosen us. We adore you. We praise your name because you are wonderful. We adore you. Because if the Lord is for us, who is against us? We adore you for tonight, for this blessing, for the salvation. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord has given us some gifts. And some gifts were, were spoken through the during the the service and the Lord says that a man that has his thoughts a little worry he needs to take a professional decision he doesn't know what to do but the Lord says before you make your plans seek first my position and the Lord will reveal the best way to take for your professional life. The commitment of the Lord is with the faithful man. It's not for this life, but if you, in Jesus, seeking Him in first, in, in, as a first plan, the other things will be added. Will be added. But it's the project of the Lord. So you need to seek the Lord and you see how He will conduct everything in His presence because it's the best way for our for our benefit uh, wait on him and let him act and the and the and the lord also talks about a, a lady that's here she has a a worry she's worried about the families and for others to not not be in the presence of the lord but everything has to be done in the spirit we can force the people we can divide our experience with anybody we cannot make everyone live what we are living in Jesus but the best way for us to preach the gospel it's to give testimony of a life a transformed life and a new life in Jesus amen let's pray and the church if you after the service if you wish to have a pray we're here to help you dear Lord receive our songs our adoration because it's with happiness that we go to your house and we know that the gratitude that we have for you is for what you do in our lives for the things you've done that's why Lord we are happy we're joyful we're we, we have the guarantee and the certainty that we are in the right way that our choice was the best choice was the best portion to live in your presence receive our adoration Lord and that your word the songs the praise the gifts that was given that that, that could be a, a teaching for us and that we can live closer to you take us with peace and give us a blessing week it's in our name we say that the grace the wonderful grace of our Savior Jesus the love of God and our eternal Father the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured upon us for now and forever amen bless your heart Steve and Wayne We're going to have a meeting with, uh, with the group of love and the instruments to all the peace of the Lord.